Well, good morning, everybody. Today is a really special and big day for me because actually today is the last day of my professional career, a career that started almost 15 years ago with one employer. Many of you actually didn't know what I do for a living and I never spoke about it before, but in this video, I'm going to reveal it to you and take you with me on my final day, which might be a little bit emotional, but I think it's nice to document this. Also for me to look back one day onto this because yeah, I mean, 15 years, I still consider myself quite young. So it's been quite a long time, quite a big part of my life, but now is really time for me. I'm so ready to start a new chapter, start my own business entrepreneurial journey. And uh, yeah, so it's a special day, but I want to take you with me on this journey. So let's do this. And that's the hotel right there. Beautiful building, isn't it? Absolutely love it. Really the place in the city. So that's beautiful restaurant over here. You can see, really, really nice. And look at this tree. I mean, the place here is just the place in town. Like literally, it doesn't get better than that. It's the best location, without a doubt, we can stay. Really, really nice, really lovely. And yeah, place I called home for so many years. Definitely a very special place. There we have it, look at this beauty. I mean, I'm definitely gonna be missing this amazing, amazing place. So yeah, definitely special moment. The place I've been so many years, I'm walking through these doors for seven years. So let's do it one last time. So yeah, here we are. So this is usually where I would, you know, meet the guests, bring them up. I had the President Biden actually over here as well. So really, really, yeah, a lot of emotional elevator rides and um, yeah, really, really big part of my life being in this elevator actually bringing guests to their rooms. Let it come out over here. And obviously we have here all the various rooms. And funnily enough, we are actually the smallest Kempinski in the whole company. We only have 93 rooms, so quite small, but I think small is beautiful and it really allowed us to make sure we look after our guests and they always valued and appreciated all the quality. I mean, we have been consistently ranked as the top hotel in the entire company in terms of quality feedback we get from the guests. So really, I mean, I'm really proud of what we did here. I think, you know, we really put the Baltics on the map and um, we are definitely the finest hotel in the entire country, which is something I'm really, truly proud of. And uh, yeah, again, I always say, you know, alone, I'm nothing. The team really made the difference. And I think the team brings the building to life because the building is just an empty building otherwise, right? But any team, you know, really elevates the quality and the impact of the hotel. So I'm super grateful for my amazing team here. 
And here we have my office. Excuse the mess, looks a little bit messy right now, obviously, as it is my last day. I got all the stuff ready that I have to take from here. Normally, you know, it is very, very much clean. I really like a clean office. Uh, there's not one paper or nothing. Um, so yeah, normally it doesn't look like that. But uh, today it is, and look at this, one of my favorite signs of all time. Execution. Stop talking and putting in the work. I love that because that's so true. Everybody can have ideas and so on, but it's about making it happen. And another one of my all time favorite quotes. If you want to make everyone happy, don't be a leader, but sell ice cream, <laughs> which is so true, right? Especially at the beginning of my career, I always tried to please everybody, but I quickly realized if you please everybody, you please nobody. And in the end, actually, you make things worse because, uh, yeah, people pleasers are not necessarily the ones really making a huge difference in the company. And sometimes you have to make some tough and popular decisions, propel the company to the next level. So, yeah, it's not always easy, but it's part of life, I guess. Right. And there you have it, guys. This is my kingdom over here where I've been for the last seven years i mean it's unbelievable to think about it i remember when i just came the first of january 2017 and i remember coming here from dubai where i was previously working also in the kempinski hotel and i came here from 25 degrees in dubai all the way to minus 15 when i arrived i said what the heck where did i come to but uh, i said to myself two years maximum i haven't even had an idea what is lithuania i had to literally google it what the place is all about but yeah, having been here now for, as I said, seven years, I really fell in love so quickly with this place. Obviously also met my Lithuanian wife and uh, just in general, the culture, the mentality, the people, it really close to my heart and uh, I, I really love it so much. And I want to have a base here always, even if I'm leaving this job right now, you know, I want to have my base here despite wanting to travel and wanting to live in Dubai as well, which I talk to you more about in the future videos. But yeah, I think it's just an amazing country to live and one of the arguably highest living quality in Europe. I would really say that by now. Yes, weather can be a little bit tricky at times. That's why we want to live also part of the year somewhere warmer. But for the rest of the year, summers here honestly is one of the nicest places you could possibly be. So if you haven't been, definitely check it out. My morning coffee, that's the usual standard. I usually drink around four coffees a day, but being an early bird and exercising in the morning, I naturally have a lot of endorphins and bring the fire, I would say, in the morning. Afternoon is a little bit tougher sometimes, so there I might need a little bit more coffee. But in the morning, it's probably my peak time, I would say, from 8.30 until 11.30. I think that's when I get most of my quality work done. And then in the afternoons, I try to do the meetings, meet the guests and so on. Things that, you know, you can kind of, you know, even not on your peak do. So, yeah, that's, that's normally how I do it. But uh, the rest, really, you know, I love really hospitality because it gives you so many different challenges every single day. You just don't know what to expect, right? Because you're going to have issues with the employees. We have around 100 employees. Every day something happens, right? Then you have guests I mean, in the house at any time. It could be 150 up to 200 guests, right? Then you have big events also going on. So there's always constantly something happening and you always have to deal with it because so many things you just can't be prepared for, right? And I love that, you know? I have a bit of my structure, of course, but a lot of the part of the day, I just don't know what's going to happen. At the same time, you know, I'm reporting to the shareholders of the hotel, of the company, back to the corporate office, to Kempinski. So there's so many different facets to the job. And that's really what keeps me engaged and kept me excited for so long. And I can really bring my own ideas, which I love about Kempinski very much. Because, you know, if I have a great idea or someone from the team, we can just go out and implement it. You know, I don't have to get a lot of approval. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you pivot to something else. And that's something I really, really enjoyed. So yeah, honestly, hospitality, I think is an amazing business because you really learn, you know, the business skills combined with the people skills. Because even I remember when I graduated from my school, I was studying in Dubai and Switzerland. And the majority of the people graduating actually ended up in different industries because a lot of banks, private investing, consulting, advisory companies, all of them understand that hospitality people, you know, they have these hard skills, you know, business, HR, what have you, but combined with the people skills. And that's super important because sometimes you can have the smartest guys in the room, you know, who do all the spreadsheets and numbers and they're very good, but they can't articulate themselves. They can't relate to other people. They can't, you know, be diplomatic. And so I think that's something really what hospitality learns you to do. Because honestly, so many times you stand in front of a furious or angry guest and you know the person is wrong. But you can't directly say that, right? They pay good money, they a luxury hotel. You still want to make them feel understood and heard while maybe kind of guiding them to your proposed solution. So I think it's a really, really good school. But at the same time, I also know it's time for me to step up because I could be doing this for another 10, 15, 20 years and time would fly by so fast. But I'm feeling 
in my comfort zone. I kind of know my job inside out. I know what I have to do. I know how to tackle potential new problems. And it's been fun, right? But now I'm feeling the fire is kind of fading away. And I don't like to be that person. I want to have that fire in my belly. I want to be pumped up when I wake up in the morning and go and fix things and build something. And the thing is here, you know, year after year, obviously you're growing your revenues, you're growing your profits, your customer satisfaction goes up and it's all nice and great. But ultimately, you know, I'm an employee, I'm on the payroll. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm really on a very nice package, I would say. As a general manager, you really well compensated, plus a lot of other benefits such as apartments and cars. Yeah, I really appreciate all the company gave me and the hospitality industry gave me. But as I said, ultimately, I'm still an employee, right? The day I leave, my business card is gone. My prestige is gone because obviously as a general manager, you're invited to all the big events and so on. And it's all great and nice for the ego and to meet people. But, you know, once I'm gone from tomorrow, basically, because right now, you know, I can only earn my salary, right? But I can't really earn beyond that. No, you can qualify for a bonus here and there. But in general, the salary is a hard cap. I can't really earn more. And while it is a nice salary, don't get me wrong, at the same time, it is a ceiling. I can never go beyond that. And I think honestly, I probably have more to give to the world and I want to start having equity in the business because that's where you really start making a difference when you have your own share. The same how I invest in the company to get dividends as a shareholder, so to say. The same, I want to be participating with my work to elevate the company and get more for it in return. If we double the profit for next year, right now, you know, maybe I'll get a little raise, maybe I'll get a thank you, maybe a little bonus, but nothing substantial. There, if it's your own company, you will feel the difference, right? And that's something I always thought, that's going to be great to build your own legacy, so to say. Because the day I leave here, guess what? It's going to be another general manager. And these things will just go on. But if you build your own company, I just think it's going to be so amazing. You can really have your own vision and scale it to infinity, right? To whatever much you want and take your own profits. And not just about profits, but really leave your own legacy. I think if I employ eventually people into my own company, I mean, it will be so fulfilling to say that you created a work for them and gave them the opportunity. So I think that's something I'm super, super excited for and really want to get cracking on it. Now, of course, it's going to be extremely challenging in the beginning, but I'm definitely ready for the ride. I don't have kids right now. I am married to my wife. We obviously plan kids in the future, but right now I think that's the best time because, you know, once you're 50, 60, you're probably not going to have a career change as such anymore. So I think now is the best time and I'm in my prime years. So let's use that. Let's use the network to make it happen. I'm still going to be doing my business in the hospitality sphere. So it's going to be hospitality related. It's going to be an online education platform. I'm also going to be doing different consulting and advisory gigs, which have already been contacted by different owners and investors, which is really nice to get that steady cash flow. And eventually I'm planning to have a software solution for the hospitality industry. But for that, obviously you need a development team. Obviously in order to pay a team, you want to have a bit of cash flow coming in. So I'm going to start with the online education platform first, and then obviously the advisory as well, plus my YouTube income, of course, which is great. And then all of that together, I can then funnel into the software game later on. So yeah, definitely very exciting times ahead, but honestly, reflecting on the last seven years here, specifically in this hotel, I personally think I've achieved a lot. I'm super grateful for the people who believed in me that put me here in the first place to the company. I think Kempinski is an amazing company. I always have a warm spot for them. Uh, I love the company. It's small, it's beautiful. I can pick up the phone, call the CEO, he knows me. And I think the hardest part is going to be leaving my team because the team really made the difference. I always say the team brings the hotel to life, right? Otherwise, it's just an empty building, but it's the team that really brings that hospitality and makes a difference. So I'm really, really grateful for them. And uh, yeah, that's always been the most fun part of my job and career to also help people to get promoted, grow in their careers and uh, make a difference for them. So I always appreciated that so same way how somebody else believed in me. I mean, I started my career with Kempinski, which has actually been my first employer uh, in Switzerland, in Geneva, was there two years. Then they moved me to Beijing in China, where it was another two years working all across China and traveling all different places. I was even in North Korea. I went to Mongolia. So it was an exciting time. And uh, from there, I moved to the UAE. I was living in Ajman, working there at the Kempinski. It's just outside of Dubai. In total, that was three and a half years. And then most recently, well, most recently, yeah, seven years ago, they sent me to Lithuania, where I've been ever since. So yeah, it's been a wild ride. Really, really enjoyed it. 
Um, sadly, it comes to an end. I'm equally excited for what's to come. I think life has to offer so much more than just working for somebody else or having your own baby, even though in the short term, maybe obviously, most likely, it's going to be a little bit less income. Long term, I think I can definitely scale it above and beyond. There's not going to be a ceiling or hard cap as to how much I can earn. So the more I work, the better I do, the more I can earn and start getting my own employees to have that scaling and growth factor in there. So I'm really excited with it. And of course, on this channel, I'm going to be documenting this process and I hope you're gonna join me on this journey and here we are in our meeting room the boardroom where the magic happens and all the numbers come to life so usually we have our morning briefings either here physically or online uh, after you know what we all have what happened two three years ago we switched to online meetings mm -hmm. we are also hybrids so some of the employees sometimes can work remotely so that makes things a bit more dynamic and I really you know want to become fully digital that's why you don't see much paper in my office and so on and uh, yeah I like to you know go with the times obviously that's normally where I sit here at the head of the table how it should be <laughs> and then here is the dream team that makes it all happen and look I got some goodies here for my last farewell and that I'll be sharing with them and look at this one what a bad boy this is a book from the White House itself i mean that's really really nice right from washington when president biden came so i think i'm going to give this to one lucky winner you can see here joe biden i mean that's pretty precious really nice one for those who like paper that's not me <laughs> all right i'm just also going to try to connect my phone here because i always like to fire them up with a bit of good music in the morning to make sure they are nicely pumped up for the day and I'm going to play a nice parting song to get them all excited. Well, guys, this is it. The place I called home for seven years. Here we are on the rooftop one final time. I, mean, I just love this view. I mean, look at this. The best view in Vilnius, literally. The cathedral, there's the main square of Vilnius. And yeah, honestly, I will never get tired of this view. And I'm obviously going to stay connected to Vilnius um, because I really love the city. I love the people, I love the country. Lithuania is just amazing. So I will definitely be touching base here. But yeah, my journey here is sadly ending. But honestly, I'm super, super grateful for that. And we had so many fun times. And honestly, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough, but I'm really excited for what's to come. And uh, I always look at the bright side, look at what's ahead, you know, look forward in life because, you know, life is short. I think the worst thing in life is having regret. And while my new venture may work out or it may not, I will at least not regret it. But never having tried, I know one thing would be for certain is having regret that once I'm old, in my final days, in the bed, I would say, Kai, what would your life have been if only you tried, right? And that's why I said, you got to take opportunities, got to go for it and just try things. And if you're passionate enough for it and you're willing to make sacrifice, put in the effort, put in the hours, willing to learn, there's no reason why you cannot achieve anything that you set your mind to it. But it starts with you because so many times other people will hold us back. Even when I spoke to some very close friends, even my mom was saying, you know, Kai, are you sure you have such a good life, such a comfortable life? And of course, it is very, very tempting to just keep on living the comfort, right? I always say you got to step out of your comfort zone, but ultimately, you know, we're working hard to get comfort. So it's kind of a conundrum and contradictory, but I believe in order to grow, you need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. And I really know deep inside it is the right step to do as hard as it is in the moment. You know, it's like when you go through the breakup, right? As soon as you go through it, it feels painful, but what's on the other side, it's going to be so much better. And I really believe in it and not just believe, but I will definitely take action and make it happen. So I'm really excited for that. Thank you for joining me on the channel. Honestly, this community, while it's still small, we just passed 10,000 followers, but I'm super, super grateful. Some of you guys have been so supportive, really writing me, messaging me, and it really, really means a lot. It's very encouraging. And even the fact that YouTube starts paying for my living expenses, you know, definitely made me more likely to take that leap because without any income, of course, it is much more of a struggle to start from zero. So having that as a base already helps. And, and now I will definitely also have more opportunities to make more and better, hopefully, content for you guys in the future. That's my goal. So I'm gonna do that and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Okay, just venturing out here to see what it looks like. And look at this. Oh, 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 up, oh, up, oh. up, yes. 
Look at that beautiful, beautiful city. Absolutely love it. Our amazing Christmas tree. And yeah, that's the property. And you can see a very good Wi-Fi signal over here. <laughs> That's it. Thank you for the last seven years. Bye bye. Look at me sometimes like all you want to do is run. Hear me out. Hear me out. It's all the things you So there you have it guys. Honestly, it's been quite an emotional roller coaster. It started off I was really cool going through the day, um, but in the end, it really got me. We had a town hall meeting where I had a last speech, so to say, to all the employees, and a lot of them even came on their days off, which was really, you know, very emotional, I must say. And in the end, I want to say a few more words, but I just, you know, bursted out of tears, just couldn't hold my emotions. And yeah, I mean, after seven years, you really grow uh, together almost like a family, and it was really, really special. I cherish all the moments, but at the same time, you know, life, always moves forward and I'm an optimist by nature so I'm excited what's to come. I cherish the past but I'm super excited for the future. Thank you for being with me on the journey. Your support really means the world to me. I'm ready. I hope you are as well. So let's get started and let's make 2024 an absolutely epic year. Thanks for being with me. I root for you from the sidelines and I'll see you very soon.